timed media conference call will be Gennady and his team, Tom Loeffler and Abel Sanchez. Later on, we will be joined by Team, team Jacobs. It is my honor now to, to ask for some opening comments from K2's Managing Director, Tom Loeffler. Go ahead, Tom. Thanks, Bernie. Well, yeah, like you said, it's a blizzard edition uh, of the media conference call, but uh, everyone seems to be uh, surviving uh, fine here in New York. We, we had to cancel the, uh, the open workouts. There's always, uh, you know, when Gennady gets in the ring, when Danny gets in the ring, the tremendous shape that they're in, that's always, uh, that's always a great fight week event. But, um, you know, it might be cold today. It's going to be red hot on uh, Saturday night at the Garden. Uh, the press conference we had yesterday here at F- the fight week uh, was uh, uh, tremendously attended by the, uh, by the media and the anticipation, you can feel the uh, anticipation here in New York and really inter- internationally uh, for this fight. Not only the two best middleweights fighting against each other at the mecca of boxing, um, but also the, uh, the undercard that uh, with Chocolatito Gonzalez, with Quadras, with Rungvasai, with Andy Lee, it's just been a, a phenomenal reaction um, to the show. And it just seems like uh, everything is culminating now um, for, for this fight week. So we appreciate everyone being on the call. We'll turn it over to, uh, to uh, Abel and Gennady for some comments. Thanks, Tom. Uh, Thank you very much uh, to all the media that's online. Uh, being confined to a hotel room and uh, and just working inside uh, the hotel gym, uh, I'm sure is going to uh, make these guys antsy and make these guys uh, look forward to the 18th, getting out and, and doing what they do best. Uh, thank you for being on. Yeah, good afternoon, everybody. Thank you very much for everybody. You know, last week, five weeks, Everybody ready, I think, so for a great show, um, and everybody excited. Thank you. Thanks very much, Gennady. Ashley, if you'd be so kind to go ahead and give the instructions to the media for asking questions, please. Once again, if you have a question, please press star then 1 on your touchtone phone. And if you wish to be removed from the queue, please press the pound sign or the hash key. Thanks very much. Our first call comes from Gail Falkenthal. Go ahead, Gail. Good morning, good afternoon, everybody. Please indulge this native Southern Californian, the weather question. (laughs) And it really is for everyone, perhaps primarily for Tom. Are you concerned at all about this changing plans beyond just today's call? And do you have contingency plans, you know, should the weather really act up uh, as the week goes on? Hi, Gail. You need to bring some of that California sunshine uh, with you. Uh, I, I York, don't even want to tell you what <laughs> my thermometer says, but it, I will. It's 87 degrees. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Some of the snow. Sorry. Here. I think Abel got it. I think actually Abel uh, has been accused of bringing the snow from Utah to uh, New York. Oh, my God. But, um, <laughs> yeah, I'll, 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 to get to your question, it's, uh, you know, it was uh, affected the, the city today. But, uh, you know, uh, in conjunction with Madison Square Garden, it, uh, the, we don't anticipate any issues even starting this evening. Uh, everything's supposed to, to clear up uh, tomorrow, and then certainly by um, Friday the weigh in and, and Saturday uh, for the show. There, there's, uh, this was uh, the worst part of the storm, and as I mentioned, tomorrow it's uh, already supposed to be uh, clearing up. So we don't expect any other. Uh, deviations from the media schedule outside of the uh, open workouts for for today. Do you think that there's a plus to the fact that your main event fighters both come from cold climates where your undercard fighters, a lot of them, do not? Roman and Carlos, (laughs) I feel it's going to be a very foreign experience for them. Well, I mean, for outside, you know, again, you know, he trains in the snow, he runs, and, you know, Danny's used to the New York weather growing up in Brooklyn, but um, you know, when, once everyone's in the arena that night, it's it's not going to matter what the uh, outdoor conditions are. It's just going to be, you know, the two guys in the ring. Um, you know, maybe fight week uh, preparations, like Abel said, training inside the hotel room. You know, it needs to be a few uh, adjustments uh, that way. But uh, once it comes to, to the weigh-in and fight night, everything will be uh, will be 100% go. Cool. Great. A- any concerns at your end, Abel? Should this continue? No, uh, we're we have nothing to do but uh, keep the weight down and, and, uh, and good nutrition and 
Uh, we have all the facilities here in the hotel to do that. I'm sure Danny does also. Uh, just uh, transportation from here to the uh, arena, even though it's close, in close proximity, uh, it's still going to be difficult because of the snow. But uh, luckily, uh, we have everything in place, and, and the way it will go on on Friday, and the guys will be in a warm climate inside the arena, hopefully with 20, 20 plus thousand people in there and warming things up. Well, you've got a new slogan to advertise this, Bernie, you know, cold outside, hot inside. Thank you all very much, and we'll see you later in the week. I will try to bring the sun with me. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks very much for the support, Gail. Ashley, if you could once again give the media the instructions for asking questions. Once again, if you have a question, please press star then 1 on your touch-tone phone. Our next call comes from Peter from Fight News. Go ahead, Peter. Uh, hi, Bernie. Hi, guys. Uh, uh, Gennady uh, Abel, Tom Mark. Question for both Gennady and maybe even for, uh, for Abel. Phil Jackson, when he was with the Bulls, when it was a bad weather and they had to stay in the room, was choosing the movies, sometimes books. Are you choosing something for Gennady? What kind of uh, books or movies? How do you relax? You want to stay focused or you want to just forget about the fight on Saturday? Well, I'll answer it first. I don't think he has a problem with uh, the fact that when I came into his room, uh, the TV was off. He, he sleeps very well. He's got uh, he's resting, so it's not a not an issue of movies or books. It's a matter of just closing the turning the lights up and closing his eyes because he sleeps very well. And you know my uh, my close friends stay with me. <laughs> my friends and my brother, everybody stay with me. You know, like bring new story, like funny story. You know, I feel very comfortable. No problem. Sounds great. Uh, question for Abel. Uh, preparing for Danny Jacobs' hand speed. Uh, you always were saying that it's hard to find sparring partners with Gennady because how hard he hits. So my question is, did you decide to have a lighter sparring partner for Triple G this time instead of usual cruisers? Uh, or how this thing worked uh, uh, in the training camp? No, actually, who we had uh, primarily, uh, who did most of the, but the bulk of the work was a young man named David Benavides, who's probably faster than uh, than uh, Danny Jacobs. Uh, excellent fighter, excellent prospect. I think he's 17 and 0, but he's about six foot two, uh, with great range and, and fast hands. So he gave us very, very good work. Um, uh, Jacobs' hand speed is uh, is of course a. Uh, something that we worked on uh, to deal with, but uh, his power was something that we also worked on. So uh, both of those things, I think David uh, did a, a lot for helping us. And the last one for, uh, for now, at least, to also to Abel. Um, the general consensus is that the Triple G is uh, knocking out people 23 in a row because of his power. But uh, when we spoke uh, many, many times, you said there is a lot more behind those, uh, those knockouts. Uh, let's forget about the power. Why do you think uh, Triple G is knocking people out in this uh, unbelievable ratio? Well, first of all, I think it's the, the Kazakh uh, fundamental. Uh, the, the Kazakh uh, uh, amateur program has developed a lot of great, great talents. They don't all become great uh, professional fighters, but uh, their record speaks for itself in the amateur ranks. Uh, that was a big help coming uh, to me, uh, and when he came to me, we worked a lot on balance, on technique, but I think Gennady has got a sense of timing because of his experience in the amateurs that is uh, uh, above and beyond uh, a lot of fighters, and his sense of timing uh, doesn't have to be fast, it just has to be right, it has to be right on point. So I think that uh, all those things combined have made him the kind of fighter that he is, but this could be a 12-round fight. It could be a 12-round fight. Uh, we're prepared for a 12-round fight, and Danny sticks around. But in the meantime, if it is a 12-round, he's going to be uh, – if he's able to take 12 rounds, he's going to be punished for 12 rounds. Thank you very much. I hope my uh, today's cancellation of the flight was the last one, and see you guys tomorrow. Thank you. All right. Bye-bye. Thanks, Peter. Our next call comes from Keith Eidek from Boxing Scene. Go ahead, Keith. Uh, yes, my question is uh, for Abel and for Gennady. Abel, I was just wondering, because the weigh-in is so early on Friday and the fighters have so much time to, uh, you know, to rehydrate and 
and they had to wait between the time. The, it's almost two full days, really, before the fight will actually start. Is that an advantage for Jacobs or because he's the bigger guy, or how do you view that whole thing? I think it's an advantage for both guys. Both guys get to rehydrate and, and, and get uh, filled up with the fluids and, and good nutrition. Uh, Gennady's always been the smaller guy, so Gennady's not going to put on extra weight just because the weigh ends early. Uh, everybody has w- always weighed five, six pounds uh, above what he weighs at, at fight night. So uh, it's not an advantage, but the advantage is, for, like I said, for both guys so that they're healthy and, and ready to, to do what they have to do on Saturday night. This is by far the earliest that he'll have weighed in, right? Uh, yes. Gennady, how do you feel He's about weighing in so early? I think it's no problem. It's no problem. This is boxing, you know, this is sport. First of all, this is sport will both athletes, you know. Yeah, you're right. Uh, Daniel, he's bigger, a uh, little bit heavier. You know, maybe a little bit more bonus for him. And I feel it's okay. I think, you know, just 10 or 50 pounds is, like, not a lot. You know, more important on Friday, we we'll say both 160. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Keith, just as a reminder, um, just in general, the uh, IBF has the uh, second day weigh-in, uh, which is maximum of 10 pounds over the 160-pound limit. So that would be both fighters would weigh in Saturday morning at 9 o'clock uh, and uh, un- have to be under 170 pounds. So it doesn't right. uh, seem to really affect it that much uh, with the earlier weigh-in on Saturday. Mm-hmm, correct. Tom, Tom, was that one of the bigger considerations to doing it that early because you knew you had the next day weigh-in so you couldn't really blow up too much in between? No, it wasn't really an issue on our side, uh, as Abel said, uh, and there was a request from the commission uh, because they, they do have a second show. They have the top-ranked show with uh, Michael Carmen on Friday night. So uh, we, we accommodated the commission's request, and both fight camps um, didn't have an issue with the early weigh-in. And, you know, in general, I guess you could say maybe it's a slight advantage for for, uh, for Danny because he's you know physically a bigger guy. But um, except from, from both sides, it wasn't an issue to uh, accommodate the, the uh, commission's uh, request. Thanks again, guys. Thanks, Keith. We also have multiple media outlets carrying the weigh-in live. Amongst them, ESPN Sports Center will carry the weigh-in live at 9 a.m. Eastern Time, 6 a.m. Pacific on Friday, and additionally, so will Univision both nationally and internationally. Our next call comes from Lance Pugmeyer from Los Angeles Times. Go ahead, Lance. Hey, guys. Um, Gennady, I, me and Abel were having a conversation when I was up at the, your gym last week about boxers who have the it factor, and he described the it factor as a, as a fighter who is willing to, um, you know, seek that knockout and basically destroy his opponent. I know you've had some very kind things to say about Daniel Jacobs, and I know it, it seems like you've come to like him in, in some ways. How do you set that aside and want to <laughs> destroy this guy in the ring? What, what, what takes over you as you make that walk, as you take those steps inside the ring? Hold on a second. You know, it's, it's, I understand, I understand the situation, you know, this is my business, my business plan and my boxing career, you know, just, first of all, thanks my coach, Abel he gave me a chance for this time, yeah, of course, Daniel, he's a very good fighter, you know, and more important, just we're both we're regular guys, you know. And he has his style, I have my style. You no, know, whose style is more stronger, more better? Showing, show you in in the fight, in, in the ring. So any any personal feelings really get set aside quickly as you as you walk into the ring and you. And the bell rings for the first round. No, it's all business. No. It's all business. Yeah, this, this, is, Len, this is sport. You know, this is sport. Every fight is different. This is sport. 
Great. Thank you, Gennady. Of course, yeah. Thanks very much, Lance. Ashley, if you could give our media instructions once again for asking questions. If you have a question, please press star, then 1 on your touchtone phone. And if you're using a speakerphone, you may need to pick up the handset first before pressing the numbers. Thanks very much. Our next call comes from Jeffrey Freeman from the Sweet Science. Go ahead, Jeffrey. Hi. Thank you for putting me on the call. I have a question for Triple G. Uh, Mr. Golovkin, I'd like to know if you saw the David Lemieux knockout of Curtis Stevens, and what were your thoughts about that? It was a very devastating knockout. Yes, I saw this knockout. You know, is a good, very good fight, very interesting fight, very dramatic fight. You know, I think Stevens and Lemieux is both. You know, like um, has both style. It's very good for both. You know, just. Who first? Just who first has la lucky punch? No. Oh, it's, it's very interesting. Very interesting. Big gift, big present for TV, for back, you know, for comeback. It's right, uh, Gennady. When, Gennady, when you fought David Lemieux, you used your jab to avoid his left hook. Did you ever feel his power? Uh, not a lot, not a lot, you know, because it's, we have different spike IQ, different uh, boxing school, you know, boxing class. Not a lot, I don't feel more power, just, yeah, he's a very strong guy, it's not a lot. Did he ever connect with you solidly, Gennady? Uh, you know, I'm ready, I'm ready for anybody who just... Is for a question of my promotions. Okay. Thank you, Gennady. Good luck against Danny Jacobs next weekend. Thank you, sir. Thanks, Jeff. Our next call comes from Michael Woods. Go ahead, Michael. Hey, guys. How you doing? Now, this question is for Abel. Abel, uh, I was wondering if you considered giving Gennady a uh, kind of a snow day day off and maybe you guys all go find a big hill and go sledding and then and then maybe have some hot chocolate. Well, you were supposed to pick us up. What happened? Oh, shoot. Is that, that was me? That was me. That was me. Yeah. driving. Okay. I, I apologize. So my kids are out there right now finding a big old hill, so I'm sure we can still do that. Um, it, no, I think it's kind of an interesting thing. When the snow uh, dumps on people like this and people are cooped up, um, you, you were asked about it a little bit, but I'll delve in a little bit deeper. So what do you do today? Do you go to the, is there a gym in a hotel and you just set up pads? Or give us a little lowdown exactly what you're going to do uh, today because you're kind of cooped up in the hotel. Uh, no, actually, we've uh, we've done all the work that, needed, that needs to be done for this fight. We sparred the rounds okay. that we needed. We did everything in the gym that was required. The week of the fight, uh, this is the same as any other week. Uh, the only difference is today, uh, these days, we're not going outside. But uh, okay. he'll, uh, he'll eat dinner, he eat breakfast this morning, he'll eat dinner at, uh, at 5 o'clock today, and then we'll have a little run on the treadmill at, uh, in, the after, in the evening and go back to bed. Uh, he has his family here, he has Max here, and he has a bunch of friends that are, like he mentioned a while ago, that, are, that came in that will share some time with him uh, before he goes to bed before we rest, and then we'll do the same thing again tomorrow. Looking forward to the weigh-in on Friday. All right. All right. Good stuff. Uh, uh, last question, I guess. What, what, what are you estimating weight today, Abel? What, do I have, what is he going to eat today? What are you estimating weight? No, what, what are you estimating weight? Oh, his weight? Uh, yeah. uh, this morning when he woke up before breakfast, it was 160. 160. All right. Great stuff. Thanks, guys. I appreciate it. Uh -huh. Thanks very much, Michael. Our next call comes from Robert Gardner. Go ahead, Robert. Hey, guys. Thanks for having me on. I have one question for Gennady and one for Abel. Uh, Gennady, of course, everyone knows how close you and your brother were growing up in Kazakhstan. Were, were there any fighters that you and your brother patterned your style from growing up? Yeah, oh, I don't know. I don't know. I remember I watched. <laughs> I like so many great fighters. Mm -hmm. Like Sugar Leonard, Marvel Hagler, you know, just. Oh. 
This is a good question. Hard question. <laughs> I like, like, I got, I like, mm-hmm. yeah, I like more, you know, middleweight division because, you know, like, to, uh, together, like, uh, speed, power, tactic, you know, for me, it's more interesting. Right. Yeah, and this one's, this one's for Abel. Abel, um, if Gennady were to get past uh, Daniel Jacobs this Saturday okay. night, I know he's been around a long time, and you've seen a lot of great heavyweights from Carlos Monzon, uh, Marvin Hagler, Sugar Ray Robinson. Where would you rate Gennady? I know the story is still being written, but where would you rate Gennady at that point as far amongst the great middleweights of all time? I, I think right now if we're fortunate to to get by Danny, who's a very good fighter on, on Saturday, I think right now I rate him in the top five. I think, he, like you said, his story is still written. I think that what he's accomplished in the middleweight division is uh, uh, he's going to break. Hopefully he breaks uh, Bernard, the great Bernard Hopkins' record of 20 defenses, and if they're all by knockout, it's, it's really the only guy uh, or the the first guy to do that uh, with that many knockouts in the middleweight division. And to have the highest knockout ratio in the middleweight division, uh, uh, we need a couple more fights, I think, to uh, to put him up there and, uh, and uh, mention him in the same breath as Ray Robinson. But uh, we're getting there, and it's a matter of just getting the fights and hopefully Tom Laufer and Herman Brothers, his managers, uh, can secure those things so that he can go down as one of the best middleweights ever. All right. I look forward to seeing you guys Saturday night. I appreciate you having me up. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks very much, Robert. Ashley, if you could give the media once again the uh, instructions for asking questions. If you have a question, please press star, then one on your touchtone phone. Our next question comes from Terrell Van. Go ahead, Terrell. Hey, Doug, can you guys hear me? Yes, absolutely. Questions for Abel. Um, can you talk about what you learned from the Kell Brook fight? And the second part of the question is, do you at this point in time consider Danny Jacobs the biggest fight of Golovkin's career? Oh, for the first question, uh, what we learned from the Kell Brook fight is that Gennady wants to put on a show. Uh, he proved it. Uh, he tried to show us that in the weight in the Monroe fight, but in the Brook fight he kind of went a little overboard as far as I'm concerned. But that. That's Gennady inside the ring, and that's what he wants to do for his fans. And uh, once he felt uh, Kel's power, he didn't feel threatened, so he made it into a bar fight looking for that uh, dramatic knockout. Um, uh, Kel's a tough guy. Kel's a, a, a champion in his own right and undefeated until then. So um, if he lasted a little longer than Gennady, uh, I'm sure would have pulled. But uh, as far as uh, uh, what, was your, what was your other question? Um, do you feel that Danny Jacobs is the biggest fight of uh, Golovkin's career, and why? I think he's the most skilled, uh, not only physically, uh, technically, but uh, mentally. I think that he's uh, he's the first guy really who we go in there who, who has got a plan, has got a plan to uh, to do what he what he has to do. Uh, he's a very smart young man. Uh, he's gone through some difficult times that I think have prepared him for just about anything in life that life is going to throw at him. Uh, but yeah, I, I believe he's he's probably the most uh, gifted of the of the guys we fight. He may not be the hardest puncher, but he's the most gifted. Okay, thank you. Thanks very much, Terrell. We're gonna let Abel and uh, Gennady go back to their training. Do you want to make some closing comments, please, Abel and Gennady, about how the week has gone so far and what you expect for the rest of the week? Thank you very much, first of all. Thank you for your intention, for your support. You know, it's, I think everybody has, has a great time in five weeks. It's five weeks on Saturday night. You know, just thank you so much for everybody. Thank you very much. Uh, well, hopefully this, uh, this great New York weather gives us a little reprieve and, and we can get on with our our weekly chores that we have planned for this week, but uh, we're looking forward to March 18th. Thank you for everybody that tuned in and asked the questions. Uh, we hope to put on that great show that he always does, that Gennady always does. Thanks very much, Abel and Gennady. We really appreciate your time today. At this time, we're joined by Danny Jacob, along with Chris Algeri and Andre Rozier. Danny, are you there? Yes, sir. How's this week treating you with the snowstorm, Danny? Oh, it's not that bad, actually. I thought it was going to be an apocalypse the way they make it seem, but it's, it's, 
pretty pretty doable. Thank you. Is Andre there with you as well? Yes, I'm here. Andre, how does this change your training plans for today? Actually, it doesn't. We're used to this. This this is our type of weather. So we go according to the game plan, and the game plan is New York will throw you a twist here and a turn there, but we're ready to rock and roll, so it doesn't matter. Thanks very much, Andre. Ashley, if you'd be so kind to give the media once again instructions for asking calls from Danny, Andre Rozier, and Chris Algeria is also in line with us. If you have a question, please press star then one on your touchtone phone. Our first question comes from Lance Pogamari from the LA Times. Go ahead, Lance. Hey, Daniel, how you doing? I'm fine, thank you. You looked great in that photo that I saw with you, uh, you breaking camp. Um, how important, I know, I know you always want to reach peak condition, but how does reaching the condition you're in right now help you win this fight? Um, I mean, looks are deceiving, you know, <laughs> because I've seen a lot of I've seen a lot of boxers who look great but aren't really in, you know, the best condition. It's really not about muscles, even though I like to see my muscles. I always brag about how good I look in camp, especially with my team. We always have fun with it, but uh, I really, due to uh, my mentality, due to my team, the help of everybody, everybody's input due to the snack facility and allowing us to use their gym and um, what they brought to the table, I really feel like I'm in I'm in the peak, tip top uh, condition that uh, it'll show come come um, you know March 18th because dealing with a guy like Triple G with pressure, you're gonna need to be in the best condition possible. So I think we've reached that, and I'm I'm content with where I'm at. Great. Right. And, you know, I, I think one of the things that's happened during uh, in the lead up to this fight, uh, Daniel, is that. Your your backstory of what you overcame um, with your cancer fight has really touched a lot of people's hearts. And I thought, maybe I'm mistaken, but I thought somewhere along the line um, when you were coming out of that, you had told some people, like, you know, I don't want to always be known as the, as the cancer fighter. I don't want that to really define me. But when you when you look around and see how many people have been touched by your story, has that changed your mentality at all or, or just reshaped it just the slightest bit? Well, absolutely not. You've got to understand, you know, there's millions and millions of people in this world that still don't know my story and that still can reach and still be inspired by my story. I never get tired of telling my story. I just understand that, you know, some of the people who've been around and heard my story over and over again might get tired of it. So that was, that was, that's what that comment was made for and actually, like, you know, my life is meaningful, and I understand that. It's bigger than just me. And, you know, I would never get tired of telling my story, but at the same time, I do also want to be known for uh, being a talented kid. And, you know, I think March 18th I have that opportunity to prove that. And, you know, along with talking about the cancer, you're also going to say, you know, Daniel Jacobs is an exceptional fighter. Yeah, absolutely. What, what's what been for you, what's been the coolest thing connected to, you know, who you are and, and, and in your role as, you know, not necessarily a spokesman, but as someone who has been touched by cancer and can help, you know, inspire people who are fighting through it? Is there anything inspirational that you immediately comes to mind when you think about, you know, your post-recovery uh, life? Um, you know, I'm not very, I'm not really... A religious guy. I'm, I'm a spiritual guy. My religion is love, and I think the the most thing that I realize is that you know when people come up to me and you know people tell me about my story or how much I, my story means to them or just how much of an inspiration me going through and me being able to push through and with my career after post cancer. You know, I just really realized like, that the love is real, and there's no greater feeling in this world than to give back and to make sure that you can touch people. So I realized that, you know, um, as an adult, post-cancer, and it's the greatest feeling. Great. Well, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. We'll see you out there in a couple of days. Yes, sir. Thanks very much, Lance. 
Our next call comes from Peter from Fight News. Go ahead, Peter. Uh, thank you very much, Bernie. Uh, good afternoon, Danny. This is Peter, still in Chicago, but hoping to uh, see you guys and see the fight as soon as possible, as soon as, as my plane comes apart. Question for you. I already asked uh, two, uh, two, two two questions, actually. I already asked Triple G how he spends his time when there's cold outside, and he prefers friends, staying in his room, having conversation. Same for you, or you have some, you know, motivational movie, book, uh, or you just want to stay completely relaxed and not really think about what's going to happen on 18? No, I think I just want to stay extremely relaxed. I mean, you know, you perform at your best when you're at peace and when you're at one with yourself and your mind and your body. Um, the key is to uh, be able to be the best that I can be. But if you get distracted mentally, then, you know, nine times out of ten you won't be able to put things together the way you and sort out. So I think the goal for me is just to make sure that I can stay focused, stay calm, even under the pressure and under all the circumstances. Um, uh, but it's one that I'm looking forward to. You know, I'm looking forward to that pressure. I'm looking forward to those nerves because I know that it's all going to pay off. And one day I'm going to be like, you know, this was one of the greatest fights and there was so much pressure, so much anxiety. But at the end of the day, we lived up to it, and, and we fought under it, and when our back was against the wall. Uh, second question. You guys started almost at the same time as the professional, professionals, uh, 2006 for Triple G, uh, 2007 for you. When was the first time you've been aware uh, about Triple G uh, and his skills? Uh, I presume it's, it was earlier than, you know, a year or two. If you can recall... When you first time have a conversation with your trainer or or whoever about oh there's this uh, guy from Kazakhstan who is knocking people out. Well, I think um, the first time I realized uh, or noticed about Triple G was when he fought the Rel in the Olympics, uh, and then I never heard of him after that. And then once we turned professional, um, I had a chance to probably hear about him. Uh, once he came to the United States. I haven't really heard too much about his early career, um, but they started to make a big buzz about him once he touched the United States and uh, got with HBO and started promoting him. So uh, I think it, once the you know majority of the fans, once they got a chance to see what this guy was like, was kind of the same timing for me, uh, although that one time in the Olympics. But like I said before, um, he said, you know, you have to respect this guy. He has uh, 300 plus amateur fights. You know, he's beaten a lot of different guys at amateurs. Um, he's to be respected. Um, but you know, Coach March 18th is is going to is going to it's going to be a new kid in town. It's going it's going to be a changing of the throne. And, you know, I'm fully 100 percent prepared for it. Thank you very much. Appreciate your time and uh, let the best man win. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks very much, Peter. Our next call comes from Jeffrey Freeman from the Sweet Science. Go ahead, Jeffrey. Hi again. Thanks again for putting me on the call. I have a question for um, Team Jacobs. Hi, Danny. Hey, how are you? With, um, good, thank you. With Chris Algieri as your trainer slash nutritionist, I have to ask, how much inspiration, if any, do you draw from his greatest victory to come from behind blood and guts win over Ruslan Provodnikov? You two discuss that fight and what Chris endured to win it. Thank you. That's a really good question. You know, actually, we all we talked about that fight, and I told him how much of an inspiration it was for me to be there at in Brooklyn when he captured that title. And you know, it was just like a Rocky story. It was the Rocky movie. It was the perfect story for him, and to see him come back and to see him, you know, get off the canvas and continue to fight and have that big swollen eye and still give it his all when you know most guys would quit, and then at the end. We talked about that that overview picture that he had with his hands up in the air uh, that that will always be memorable, you know. And I think for me, having a guy who, you know, has that experience, who has captured his own championship and captured his own memories, the memories that I'm trying to create, it can only add inspiration. Uh, he's a very uh, fun guy to be around. Um, He's the best nutritionist that I've ever had, uh, especially in camp. Uh, and I'm just grateful for the opportunity to work with him. You know, he's uh, 
a stellar guy, and, you know, he's 100% believing in my ability um, and making sure that I could be victorious Saturday night. Thanks for that, Danny. Um, is Chris on the line? Yes, sir. Yes, I'm here. I, I was just wondering, Chris, if you could comment a little bit about, uh, on that, the uh, Provodnikov fight as it relates to working with uh, Danny. You know, it's uh, it can be somewhat of a similar situation that, you know, Danny's an underdog in this fight, um, you know, and, and people may be saying what they're saying about what's going to happen Saturday night. But, um, you know, it, during my camp leading up to the Provodnikov fight, we had no doubt about what was going to happen. The, the positivity of the camp, um, uh, the momentum of the camp was, was just up. Team Algeria was, was super strong and ready to perform. And I'm feeling, I'm feeling that same way now being in Team Jacob, that the whole team is united. Everyone has one singular focus, all have the same mindset. There's, there's no doubt in our camp. Um, you know, it's, 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 we, don't have, we don't have any doubt about what's going to happen. You know, we, we know Danny's done the work. We know he's best prepared. Uh, and we know what he brings to the table. So, you know, it's the positivity of, of the camp has been overwhelming. Thank you, Chris. And one last question for Danny. Dan, I don't, I don't wish to dwell on the uh, Lemieux-Evans knockout. I know you've commented about commented on that. I wonder if you could talk a little bit more about that and what, what you saw in that fight. Um, you know, this is boxing. Anything can happen. Like I said, you don't want to see people that you've known for a long time uh, end up in results like that. But, you know, this is a reminder of how good this sport can be, and it just keep you, you know, on your toes and mentally sharp for uh, any fight that you have in the future. Uh, this is boxing, you know. Uh, I knew when I signed up what could happen. Um, like I said, when you have friends and you have family or you have peers or people that you know that get hurt, it's not a good feeling. Thanks, Danny. Good luck, Miracle Man. Thank you very much. Jeff, thanks for joining us once again. Our next call comes from Cynthia Conte from the Fight Guys. Go ahead, Cynthia. Hi, guys. Good morning. Uh, this, this question is for Danny Jacobs. You've done something a boxer has never done. You brought on your friend, fellow boxer, and performance nutritionist, Chris Algieri, as we just heard from him. How has that changed your performance overall compared to all your last bouts? Uh, I mean, you know, the thing about Chris is that not only are we, the goal is to make sure that I can make weight comfortably and to have, best, and have the best nutrition for, you know, my fight night, but his, his, his motto is that we're going to be prepared and ready for each and every session inside the gym. So we're going to be nutritious, we're going to be nutritiously, give me that word, Chris? Nutritionally sound. Nutritionally sound. Thank you, Chris. <laughs> So for, for each and every sparring session and for each and every bout uh, um, session that we have in the gym and the sparring match that we have. so And it's worked out, you know. I've been shocked by the amount of food that I've been able to have um, and the variety of foods that we have. It's just different. I'm, I've also been educated. So I'm looking forward okay. to allowing myself to have the best possible, uh, you know, nutrition and uh best possible, you know, preparation for the fight. With that being said, once you step off that ring March 18th, after the fight, what are you craving to eat? We have to know. <laughs> you guys, have been, you guys <laughs> have been leaning out, and you've been eating um, based on what, you've been, um, what Chris has been cooking you. It's all healthy, nutritious, real food. But is there something that you're definitely craving that you just, want to stuff your face after? Well, you mean after the fight or after the win? Yes, a after, after, after the fight, because you can't just oh, start okay. eating junk food after the win. But after the fight, uh, that's when you can fight, really I indulge. Think, I think our, our tradition is probably going to, like, Shake Shack or, you know, probably getting something dirty and nasty that we just <laughs> wouldn't get the grease in our system. But... You know, prior to the prior after the weigh and prior to the fight, I think we want to get, you know, the best possible nutrition in. Maybe some bison burgers and, you know, maybe some protein, some chicken, some veggies, of course. Um, and definitely some nice carbs. But, you know, after the fight, it's going to be no hose bar. Okay, and this uh, question for Chris. Uh, what was Danny Jacobs' favorite meal that he loved, right. that, you, that he wanted, and also what was his least favorite and was he a picky eater? 
Um, kind of a good question. I mean, I might have to refer to Danny on what was his actual favorite. Uh, the turkey. Okay, that's what I thought. So I, I have a, I have a pretty, uh, pretty solid turkey burger recipe that you know he was a big fan of, and whenever I whipped that up, he was he was pretty excited about it. Very very consistent and, and, and super clean. Um, but uh, no, he wasn't. He he was actually really easy to work with. He's not picky at all. He's got a pretty pretty mature palate when it comes to seasoning and spices. And uh, and and he's eating. He he knows what good food is. So it wasn't hard to get him to eat some of the dishes that you know all the dishes that I was pr- pr- uh, putting together. And I'd say probably his least favorite or the one that he might wanted to avoid more than anything was uh, was when I served white fish like cod, um, which initially he was like I don't like cod, but I was like yeah you like it the way I cook it. So we prepared that and we did it a couple different ways, and that was the, that was the mainstay of, of Taco Tuesday when it was fish taco time. So I got him, I got him to like that too. All right. Well, thank you, and good luck this Saturday. Thank you. Thanks very much, Cynthia. We appreciate your support. Our next call. Our next call comes from Robert Gardner again. From go ahead, Robert. Hey guys, thanks for having me on. I had just one question for uh, um, Daniel. I'm so impressed with um, how you and Triple G are received by your peers. You're so respected. Uh, namely because you guys handle business in the ring. How does that make you feel to know that guys in your sport respect you guys a great deal? It makes me feel good, you know, uh, 100%. I just feel like the, you know, stereotype of boxers is that, you know, we're all kind of rude, disrespectful, don't have uh, vocabulary, we're not, respectful of each other, all we want to do is fight, 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 right? But I wasn't taught that way, even though this is my job, this is my profession. I always like to bring who I am to the forefront, and I think that people can respect that. It's just, you know, real recognized, real. And I think a lot of people appreciate that, and, you know, they, they speak about it a lot. I'm grateful that, you know, I, I have a guy in front of me that is in a trash somewhere because, you know, it would probably lead me to talk, a, you know, have a little bit of remorse to want to, say something bad, but, you know, this is a gentleman's sport, and I'm glad that we can have people with the right conduct represent it right. Well, as, as I stated before, you guys are two great ambassadors to the sport, and uh, I wish I could sneak you guys in one of my Baltimore crack takes, but Chris will probably beat me up, so I'll just leave that alone. <laughs> Thanks for having me on. Thank you. Thanks very much, Robert. Ashley, if you could go ahead and give the instructions once again to the media for asking questions. If you have a question, please press star, then one on your touchtone phone. Our next question comes from Gail Falkenthal. Go ahead, Gail. Good afternoon, gentlemen. Um, Again, another call, a uh, question for Chris. Chris, now that a lot of people have been watching you work with Danny and listening to how pleased he is, are you getting calls from anybody else? Who wants to work with you as a nutritionist in the same vein as Danny? Has, has he been good for business? Uh, no, nothing, nothing yet. No other fighters reached out, um, and I'm okay with that. This, this was, this is a special case. You know, I, I said that if I didn't have a personal relationship with Danny prior to this, this whole thing, I, I, I wouldn't have done it. Um, you know, spending two months with somebody that you, you don't know or don't particularly like would be a very difficult task, and. Um, and not worth it for me. But this, this, uh, like I said, this is a special case. But not, not saying that I wouldn't be open to it, but um, I haven't been anybody reaching out just yet. So to follow that comment up, you would, you do see this as something you'd like to do going forward as a, as a business, but you sound fairly few you'd work with. Is, is that fair characterization? I'm sorry, I lost you for a second. I, I missed that last statement. Uh, following on the comment, you you do see this as something you'd be pursuing, perhaps in the future as a, a business venture. But it sounds like you'd be a bit picky about who you'd work with. Yes, for sure. I mean, you know, I went to school for this. I spent a lot of money to get a degree um, in in what I'm practicing now, and um, I stay up on top of my, my certifications, and I'm, I'm uh, very much in the sports uh, sports nutrition world and very active, so, um, you know, this is definitely something I do as a business, something I will pursue as a business as well, um, but yes, I would definitely, uh, especially because I'm still an active fighter, that I would be very very particular about who I would choose to work with. Well, for everyone else on the call, I 
checked out your LinkedIn page, and I refer everybody else to it. It's very impressive. And good luck Thank on Saturday. Thank you. Thanks very much, Gail. Appreciate your, your support. Our next call comes from Mike Woods. Go ahead, Michael. Hey, guys. I'm uh, enjoying the heck out of this call to talk about nutrition, and Danny is still at ease at a very fun call. Um, I do want to ask, I'm monitoring Twitter as I'm writing this up, and a, a fella commented on how um, during the Kell Brook fight he thought Golovkin looked terrible. And so I put it back to Twitter, and I said, do most people think that? And so I want to put it to Danny. Danny, what was your take on how Golovkin looked against Kell Brook? Do you think he looked diminished and maybe a little slower? He's 34, almost 35. What, what is your take? Um, I mean, one could argue that. I okay. think that, um, you know, what's this guy named who fought Andre Ward? The, uh, let's call it him out, Triple G. This is a guy from, from the U.K. So, yeah. We, uh, Liam, was it one of the Smith brothers? Smith? No, the guy from the, the, no, no, the guy from the U.K., he's retired now. But he's saying he's going to come back oh, and fight. Frosh, Frosh. Frosh. Okay, yeah. So Frosh. Oh, cool. yeah, so okay, Frosh, yeah. said it, Frosh said it best when he said Triple G best years are behind him. And okay. I kind of agree with that, even though I still think, you know, he's still a dangerous fighter and he's um, okay. still a big threat. Um, I do think that, um, you know, this is the perfect timing for me because, you know, it's similar to when I fought Peter Cullen. You know, Gabe Rosado, uh, in my opinion, you know, was – was on the verge of, you know, beating him if he didn't get that cut on his eye. And I was just like, man, like, I hope this guy doesn't do it. You know, I want to be the guy that does it because around that time I was calling Peter Quillen out. Um, and this is a similar thing for me. Even though um, Kel Brook wasn't close to beating uh, Triple G, he did expose a lot of different things as far as movement, um, speed, ring generalship, and he just really didn't have the sheer size to, you know, be effective. And especially once that eye got hurt, he was uh, he was done for. Uh, but he did, for me, in my opinion, expose a lot of different things. Uh, I, I don't know if I have a similar style like uh, Kel Brook, but I do know that I bring a lot to the table also that would be a problem to Triple G. But like I said, it's just about going in there and proving going in there and getting the job done. Um, I can talk about it all day, but, you know, Saturday night, it's up for me to step up to the plate. Very good answer. Good stuff. Thank you very much, guys. Thank you. Thanks very much, Michael. Our next question comes from Matthew Quigley. Go ahead, Matthew. Hey, guys. This is for Daniel and Chris, sticking with the theme of nutrition, because what else? Uh, considering that IBF mandated Saturday morning weigh-in and the 10-pound uh, rehydration limit for that title, is you concerned about coming in under that? Um, no, I'm not really worried about that. You know, uh, I've done it before in a couple other uh, title matches that I had. Um, it's nothing new. Uh, I don't plan on being super heavy anyway, so it's not like it's going to affect um, the game plan. Um it's, it's, it's just a constructive diet like we always have. We're just going to make sure we eat properly. We're just going to make sure uh, we make weight. And once again, this is a job that I have to get done. Um, the hard work is already put in in the gym. Just make sure the, the fine-tuning is done. And after the weigh-in, we'll eat right, weigh-in again, and then we'll continue to stay strong nutrition-wise uh, for, uh, for the remainder of the day until the fight comes. Okay. Daniel, I think this is your first fight at the Garden since late 2012. Uh, how does it feel to be going back to Madison Square Garden and challenging for the uh, the three titles that Golovkin has? It feels great. I mean, you know, for me to have this matchup with, you know, with a guy who people consider to be the best in the world in my division and for a guy to have all the belts, majority of all the belts, and for me to have this opportunity to be great, you know, Madison Square Garden held a lot of different great matchups. You know, Muhammad Ali once walked those same uh, those same floors and was in the same locker rooms and had the same mind frame as I do now. So I'm just reliving um, 
you know, what my heroes once walked and once did before. And it's inspirational to me. And I'm a New Yorker, too, so it means that much more to fight in front of my home crowd and then do it in a building where people consider the method of boxing. You know, I'm grateful for these opportunities. All right. Thank you very much, Daniel. Best of luck on Saturday. And I want to let you know I'm calling from the corner of DeKalb and Tompkins and bed so not too far from your old stomping grounds. All right. That's it. Thank you, brother. <laughs> Take care. Matthew, thanks so very much. We'll see you Saturday night. Our next question comes from Terrell Van. Go ahead, Terrell. How you doing, uh, Danny? Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Um, watching the HBO 24-7, you seem to be um, heavily focused on Golovkin's flaws in that uh, Kell Brook fight. You made a statement somewhere along the lines of, if Kell Brook was able to um, land those shots, um, what, about, what about if I landed those shots? Then my question is, do you feel feel that Golovkin has defensive flaws, or do you feel that it's actually him really wanting to test his um, opponent's power? Uh, I, I have no idea. You know, it is what it is. I don't know the reason behind it. Um, I just know what I would do in certain situations. And I know I'm the biggest threat that he's faced as a professional, and I know that I bring a lot to the table. And mentioning other opponents – are just really mentioning certain flaws that I see that I feel like I would be, uh, that I can capitalize, capitalize off greatly. Um, so, you know, Saturday night will prove everything. Because like I said before, we could talk about this, we could talk about that, but it's really up to me to go in there and get the job done Saturday. Okay, final question. Now, it's almost, well, it'll be uh, July the 31st um, of this year, where seven years ago you took the biggest loss, the only loss of your career against uh, Dimitri Pirogue. Now, what I've noticed is a lot of people are not giving you credit or a chance to beat Golovkin just off of that defeat. Now, it was a devastating defeat, but then in August of 2015, you had that flash knockdown. Um, you was flash knocked down by uh, Sergio Mora. What do you say to the fans or, you know, the naysayers that are not giving you a chance off of um, a fight that was basically seven years ago? I don't say anything. I do my job. I go in the ring and I prove. Boxing is a proven sport. You have to go in there and prove it. Um, it's easy to criticize and say that you don't have a shot because you've been down against this guy or you've taken a loss to this guy. But so many people in the history of boxing has gone down and still made it to where they can be considered pound for pound best boxer in the world. So that's really my goal. I'm staying focused. I don't listen to you know, the, what the critics say or, you know, I can go on and on about, you know, why this happened or why this happened or, you know, but at the end of the day, you know, my job is to make sure that I'm talking inside that ring and, and I'm coming out victorious. All right, thank you. Good luck on Saturday. Thank you. Joel, thanks so very much. We're going to let uh, Danny and Andre and Chris go back to their work today. Danny, if you have any final comments for the media leading up to the fight on Saturday night. Oh, no, it's just, you know, I really appreciate everybody's support. I appreciate the coverage that we're receiving. This is a big fight, and uh, I just really look forward to everyone tuning in, and I'm grateful for the opportunity to be fighting for all the belts. Um, stay tuned. Buy that pay-per-view. Come to Madison Square Garden. But whatever you do, don't miss this fight. Thanks very much, Danny. Andre, some closing comments, please. March 18th is almost upon us. So the work has been done. The trials and tribulations have been covered. Uh, we've had a fantastic time preparing for this event, and Danny will be performing at a stellar level on March 18th. So make sure you tune in. If you can't tune in, drop in. And if you can't drop in, put your ears up against Madison Square Garden because you'll surely be able to hear what's going on inside. Thanks so much, Andre. Chris, can you tell us what the team will be having for dinner this evening? <laughs> uh, tonight we're going to do some fish. Uh, we had steak a few nights ago, but um, you know tonight we're going to go a little lighter, go some, some get some fish in. But we got a we got a workout later on tonight, and a little little boxing workout for the champ to stay sharp. Thanks you so very much, gentlemen. Really appreciate you taking the time. Hopefully the blizzard clears up and everybody has a great day. I know Tom Laufer from K2 Promotions is still on the line. Tom, you want to make some closing comments about how ticket sales are going and about the pay-per-view on Saturday night? 
Uh, absolutely. Um, actually, Bernie, just looking out the window, it looks like it stopped snowing, so uh, everyone uh, can make it to New York. Uh, you know, I just have to uh, really compliment uh, both Danny and, and uh, Gennady uh, once again, just hearing them again you know, at, the con- at the press conference yesterday and the conference call. Lance asked the question about, uh, you know, it sounds like uh, Gennady likes uh, Danny and they, they just have, you know, uh, um, uh, uh, respect for each other. But, uh, you know, that really comes from just respecting each other's talents in the ring and really their, their characters outside the ring. I think it's a mutual respect that they have and, and it's clearly uh, each uh, fighter is going to want to win uh, Saturday night. It'll be uh, red hot inside that garden like Andre Rozier said, and uh, the tickets, there are some tickets available this week. It is uh, selling faster than the little new fight, and that sold out uh, by fight night, so we encourage everyone to buy their tickets early. And uh, the pay-per-view starts at uh, 9 p.m. East Coast time, 6 p.m. West Coast time. Don't forget uh, to order the, uh, the pay-per-view if you're not able to come uh, to the Mecca of Boxing. Thank you for everyone being on the call. Thanks very much, Tom. One final note, ahead of the pay-per-view earlier that evening, there will be a free view featuring former WBO middleweight world champion Andy Lee. Thank you again for joining us in the media. Have a wonderful day.